Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is fight week. It's the Monday. It's October 7th, 2024. Let's give a prediction on Arthur Baturbiev against Dmitry Bevel. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me lead by saying this. There's an excellent interview. It's highly relevant. It's Alexander Grosdick who beat heavy puncher, southpaw, Adana Stevenson. Then went on to fight Arthur Baturbiev in a fight that Grovestick is outboxing him in. I want people to look at the scoring of the Grovestick Baturbiev fight. He's outboxing Arthur Baturbiev, then he gets stopped. Understand, Grovestick would then go on to fight David Benavides. He's the guy at 175 pounds who goes the distance with Benavides. Right, Grovestick gives one of the best analysis I have heard of Arthur Perturbiev in this Boxing News 24 article. It's important that you know this fighter. He's older now. It's also important that you know Boxing News 24, an excellent website. Right, let me also make another point too. You've heard me talk about the scorecard in the Grovestick Baturbia fight, when that fight gets stopped. I want people to also revisit the Anthony Yard Baturbia scorecard. Because understand, in that fight, I know it's shocking as we look back, but Yard comes out bouncing. Yard comes out behind a jab. Yard's moving, refuses to get deep in the pocket early with Baturbia. Folks, I want you yourself to look at the scorecards or look at the scoring. You'll be shocked at how close that fight was at the time of the stoppage. Now, let me just say this. If I had to pick a winner, I would pick Beevil. I think Beevil wins the fight. But we're going to bet it a little bit differently because I believe this is a prop bet fight. I believe it's very bettable, but it's a prop bet fight. Let's give a little bit of background. Now, here online I've been talking about the best heavyweights in history. And I've mentioned that I believe the Ali of the 60s is the best heavyweight in history. Right? Um, well, let me point out. Ali misunderstood we view him as a light-hitting pretty boy. But, for gamblers like us, let's recognize that he was a combination puncher with great legs who knew how to move away from you. And understand, in the 60s, Ali is calling rounds. In other words, he's not going into the fight trying to win by decision. He actually would tell the press that he was going to stop people like Zora Fali in a particular round. Right? He did this fight after fight. That's who he was. He was a closer. Right? You understood that if Ali got you going on a combination, Ali was going to try to take you out. He was so proficient at it. That when he fights Ernie Terrell and that fight goes the distance, that's the what's my name fight, people thought Ali carried Terrell the last few rounds simply to punish him. Now I want you to look at Bevo, who like Ali, is blessed with hand speed. Like Ali, Bevo is a combination puncher. Like Ali, Bevel has spectacular legs, right? But understand, there's a difference. 
Bevel does not finish the combinations. Whereas Ali wanted stoppages. Right? This is Ali in the 60s. Whereas Ali wanted stoppages. Bevel wants safety. In other words, he gets you going on a combination. Now, whereas an Andy Ruiz stays with it the last two punches of a combination to put you down. Just understand that Bevo gets you going on a combination and then he'll back away to reset. Folks, in my opinion, that's this fight in a nutshell. Right? I believe that Bevo has made a living fighting the heaviest punchers he can find who can't move with him, who are prone to getting hit with combinations, and then Bevo can move away from them. So, in my opinion, Jean Pascal hits as hard as Arthur Baturbiev. Joe Smith, who Baturbiev beat, is very heavy-handed. Right? Bevo has fought guys with punches. Canelo, at the end of the day, forget the great defense and all that other stuff, he's one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Right? I believe you're dealing with a guy who is looking for people like that. Right? You know, on these true crime shows, there's victimology. And then they start figuring out that Ted Bundy's victims all look alike. Right? That David Berkowitz's victims all look alike. To the point where women start combing their hair differently because they think if I change my hairstyle, I'm not going to be a target. Well, just understand, folks. This is who Bevo fights, right? This is the guy who's looking for Baturbiev because he has looked at film and he realizes that if he starts a combination on Baturbiev, he can back away from it and then win the round. He's looked at film on Baturbiev and he realizes Grovesdick is beating Baturbiev well into the fight. He realizes Anthony Yard, who is not a up-on-his-toes boxer, can come up with that style for this fight and then be highly competitive with Baturbiev on the scorecards. Understand, too, the movers. Now, I'll concede Ali's a little reckless, right? Ali's up against the ropes, against sluggers. Right? For the record, guys like Ernie Terrell, guys like Cleveland Williams, they were viewed as sluggers in the 1960s. Ali even fights Archie Moore. Right? They were viewed as sluggers in the 60s. Ali went looking for these guys. Right? Well, just understand, here, Bevel is prepared to go 12 rounds with Paterbiev. Bevo views this as an exercise where he gets to show his legs and movers like Bevo don't get caught on the ropes. By the way, that's Grove Stick's big advice to him. Right? Don't get caught on the ropes. Move away. You don't have to tell that to this fighter. He has an educated back foot. Right? Look carefully at the Gilberto Ramirez fight. By the way, that's one of the best fights against Bevo. Right? Ramirez actually lands a lot of body shots. You have to look at the compu box numbers to figure it out because Bevo is a poker player. Look at his face. Another, a big difference between him and Ali is Ali's emotionally involved with his opponent. Right? Ali's making faces to the opponent, Ali's talking with his opponent. Right? Bevel is Clint Eastwood. 
right? Beevil is a Terrence Crawford character where you don't know what he's thinking looking at his face. He gets hit with several body shots in that Gilberto Ramirez fight. You wouldn't tell that he's hurt or has felt any of the shots, right? But understand, in that Gilberto Ramirez fight, Beevil starts some four and five punch combinations. One would think that a combination puncher who starts a good combination and has you frozen is going to close the show. Ray Leonard, over a 60% KO ratio. Right? Just understand, if you don't move away from Andy Ruiz, you get stopped. How many times? Or at least knocked down. How many times was Luis Ortiz on the canvas against Andy Ruiz? No, this is the combination puncher who walks away from open shots. In other words, he comes in, hits you hard twice. You're there, you know, hit up. You're there a little bit defenseless. And then he backs away because he's won the exchange. His goal is winning rounds. So this fight to me is a switch. We're going to talk about the props I like. This fight's a switch. It goes one way or the other. This could be Ali Liston, the first fight, where Ali comes out and it's clear. It's clear. First two-thirds of the first round, Ali doesn't even throw a punch. Right? First two-thirds of the first round. Maybe the first half of the first round. It's clear Liston is too slow for him. It's clear that Liston, fearsome puncher, right, just can't get close enough to him to land, right? I believe here Bevo has four rounds, excuse me, Paterbiev has four rounds to break Bevo's construct, right? He has four rounds to come in and throw Bevo off, be so aggressive that Beevil can't keep him off of him. Right, folks, just understand that's going to be close to impossible in a sport where if you're a mover and you know how to not have your back up against the ropes, think Ezra Charles against Rocky Marciano, and you also understand the value of lateral movement. Right, folks, let me just ask the question. For how many rounds was the Beevil Canelo fight competitive? Four? Right, just understand what happens. You have two different games coming on. The pursuer thinks, hey, this guy's going to slow down. He's going to be in the pocket eventually. Right, the mover who's a combination puncher is looking at the angles and realizes, you know what, when I get this guy to lift his feet and to move to his left, I have a second to move away. Right? I already know I'm not going to go straight back. That's an amateur move. I already know where I am in the ring. Right? I already know that. Right? So... I'm going to be circling this guy and I'm just going to look for those moments where I can jump in and pop off two-thirds of a combination in Beevil's case, right? Two, three quick punches. Then I'm going to back away. Then as this guy comes toward me, I know the punches he's going to throw. But Terbiev, not a gifted body puncher. You know he's a headhunter. You know his strategy around your tilted head is to try to hit you on the top of it and the side of it. You already know that. So one of two things is going to happen as I see it. The first four rounds are must-watch boxing. Either Perturbiev, who is coming off a torn meniscus in his right leg. In other words, Perturbiev, the first fight got postponed because Paterbiev required knee surgery. Think about that. So Paterbiev, who doesn't move as well as Beevil as it is, 
is now recovering from knee surgery. So the first four rounds are either going to be Ali Liston, where the movement gap's going to be obvious, or it's going to be Liston Floyd Patterson, where Liston, a wrecking ball, shout out to Nick Ball, a wrecking ball, ends up with the heavyweight champ in the pocket and takes his title. Right? Beats him up, batters him. Folks, we have not seen in his entire career unbeaten Beevil, guy who's fought John Pascal, a guy who's fought Canelo, a guy who's fought Joe Smith. Right? We have not seen him battered where his movement's been affected, where he's been hit in the body a few times and he actually has to go to plan B and plan C. Folks, we have not seen that. And he's faced some crafty vets. Right, so just understand, if you're on the Paterbia side of the play, you're hoping for something new. You're hoping to actually see him slow down, impacted by shots. I believe people are going to get frustrated because legs can turn a fight into a desperate situation for the fighter who is pursuing the guy with legs and movement. Beevil also has spectacular upper body control. So you're talking about the mobile, defensively blessed fighter. So as Paterbiev comes toward him, Beevil's not only going to be able to move away from him, Beevil's going to be leaning as he moves away. So let's talk about the prop bets I like. Right, believe it or not, Paterbiev, in this relatively evenly odded fight, Right, where Beevil is a slight favorite. Believe it or not, at DraftKings right now, and I believe Paterbius has four rounds to break Beevil's construct. If at the end of four rounds, Beevil looks like he's just gotten out the shower, looks like he's just having a pleasant workout, folks, the fight's over. Right, Beevil has to be slow at the end of four rounds. For Baturbiev to win this fight, in my opinion, the way I'm playing it, he has to win it in the first eight rounds. So, DraftKings. Why is this fight appealing? Because you're getting Baturbiev right now to win in the first six rounds at DraftKings at a plus 750. What I'm going to do is in the comment section of this video, I'm going to post the Grove Stick interview that I mentioned, and I'm also going to post the odds from oddschecker.com that has a few sports books. Just understand, at DraftKings, they're offering you a plus 750. Baturbiev rounds 1 to 6. At other sports books, they're offering you a plus 500. So in this evenly matched fight, you're actually getting odds that make it worth betting. Right? Let's dive deeper into the props. Baturbiev rounds 1 to 6 plus 750. Bet a dollar to win $7.50 plus the return of your dollar. What could be better than that? Baturbiev round 7, 18 to 1. Baturbiev round 8, 2000. To one right um, American odds so let's say I bet a dollar on Baturbia of rounds one to six let's say I bet a dollar Baturbia of round seven let's say I bet a dollar Baturbia of round eight now hopefully you're more imaginative than me I'm just picking a dollar so the math is easy and viewers can listen and follow along Right, but you mix it up. So you're increasing the leverage. 
In other words, you bet a little bit heavier on rounds one to six because you understand. If you hit in round seven or round eight, you're at least making your money back. If Baturbiev wins rounds one to six, I get $7.50 back minus the two bucks I've bet on round seven and round eight. Right, so on the Baturbiev side of the play, I would profit seven fifty minus two five fifty. So that allows me to throw three bucks on the Beevil side of the play. Just to cover the bets, if I think Baturbiev's gonna win. Right? Just do the math. I could even, if I wanted to go bigger, I could bet four bucks on the Baturbiev side of the play. Uh, on the Beevil side of the play just to water the plants while having upside exposure on the Baturbiev side of the play. Now, if you're on the Bevel side of the play, right now you're getting a minus 140. By the way, the odds are getting shorter on the Bevel side of the play. In other words, late money is realizing that Baturbiev is coming in this fight with a surgically repaired knee and the money is fleeing to the Beevil side of the play. You're getting him at a minus 140. I notice some books have him at a minus 150. In my mind, those are the odds that deliver. Understand, this fight might be more like Ali Liston won than we want to believe. Let's say Baturbiev, who's 39 years old, is in the ring, understands that he cannot catch Bevel. Understands that like Liston understood he could not catch Ali. Right? Let's say Baturbiev tries to mentally intimidate the guy, and then he finds out that this guy is one of the most mentally strong guys in the entire sport. Right? Bevel's face never changes during fights. Right, about as emotional as I've seen Bevel get was at the beginning of the Gilberto Ramirez fight. Right, Ramirez, who used to spar with him. Right, one of the secrets in life, by the way, is that Bevel used to spar with Benavides. Right, uh, Ramirez, who sparred with Bevel, right, and also sparred with Benavides, uh, said some things before the fight that Bevel didn't like. Right, that you know, he thought he was going to win based on the sparring. So, you'll notice in that fight, Bevel gets a little emotional and bumps him after a round, right? To let him know, hey man, player, this is a real fight, this ain't sparring. You know, you're in for a long night, which Ramirez was, right? But understand, this is the mover who is mentally tough. The public sees a guy moving. And they think, oh, he's afraid of a, you know, heavy-handed opponent. He's afraid of Sonny Liston. No, it's the mover who studied the sport. Who, you know, has the mental strength to be on his back foot. Right, the craziest thing I've seen <laughs> Anthony Yard do was come out against Baturbiev bouncing. Right, so understand, if Baturbiev, who's game, is to intimidate. If he realizes by the end of the fourth round, hey man, my knee is not helping. This guy is hitting me with crisp counter combinations. I can't back him up. There's a possibility that Beevil gives up his knockout streak. Gives up his title reign on a stool the same way that Sonny Liston gave up his heavyweight championship on his stool against Ali. Right? Intimidation types understand when they can't reach you. The mistake Grovesdick made in a fight that Grovesdick was winning was that as Baturbiev turned up room temperature and kept being hyper-aggressive to the point where Andre Ward on the telecast said this almost looks like a big brother, little brother situation. Right? The mistake Grovesdick made 
was he fought back. Right? And he was trying to finish his combinations. Bevel's not going to make that mistake. Right? You'll know the fight is truly over if, like the Canelo fight, Bevel had. Bevel in the later rounds then allows Canelo to actually back him up to the ropes. By then you'll know that Bevel, who's defensively blessed, has figured out the angles and knows that Baturbiev, who's primarily a looping headhunter, right? Baturbiev's throwing punches from a lot angles. He tries to confuse you by moving laterally before he throws big shots to the side of your head. You'll know that not even the possibility of that is going to fade or phase Bevel. So, if I had to bet on one outcome, I'd take Bevel simply to win at a minus 140 or a minus 150. Right? Since we live in a world of prop betting, even though I think Baturbiev is going to lose, rounds 1 to 6 at plus 750, I like that. Round 7 at a 18 to 1, Round eight at a 20 to one, which is a plus 2,000 in American odds. I like that too. But I need for people to understand the risk involved. If Baturbiev wins the fight by decision, which is possible, if he knocks down Beevil a few times, right? Think Chris Billum Smith against Lawrence Acoli. If he wins by decision or if he wins by late stoppage, you lose it all. That's the risk I'm willing to take. That's how I see the fight. Let me invite the gamblers out there to give their views in the comment section of this video on any prop bets that completely catch their eye. I believe Baturbiev right now knows how good or how bad his knee is. If he feels that the knee isn't as stable as he hopes it would be, and understand one of the reasons why this fight is in October is because you have the Goliath fight. Fury, Usyk, I should say Usyk, who won the first fight, Fury, for the heavyweight championship coming up later this year. Right, folks? Life's unfair. There's the heavyweight champ, and then there's everyone else. I believe even a gem of a fight like this, light heavyweight championship, understood it could not be scheduled close to that fight. Right? So, let's just say inconvenient injury, major injury, you're fighting an Ali type, you're fighting Bevo, and you don't have full use of your legs. Right? Boxing is a grueling sport. Everyone's healthy at the beginning of the first round. Right? By round seven, by round eight, as you can imagine, that tennis elbow, that vulnerable knee starts to ache. Right? You start to slow down. Not only that, father time is unrelenting. You're 39, you're thinking, hey, I'm in the best shape of my life. Then you're in against an elite athlete who is six years younger than you, who has legs you've never had, right? The world changes. I think Baturbiev faces an uphill battle here. I'm expecting Bevel. If Bevel starts the fifth round, again, looking like he just got out of the shower, this fight's going to be lopsided to the point where by round 10, we're all going to know that this fight's going to go the distance unless Baturbiev quits. And we'll all know that Baturbiev needs a knockout in rounds 11 and 12 to win the fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I'm expecting Bevel to win. I'm expecting Bevel to win going away. Tell us your scenario, tell us your narrative, tell us why in the comments section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.